Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Taco King Art. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another art session today. We're going to be doing some more watercolor painting, and I'm also going to be introducing a new character to the Taco King series. We're also going to be using some fairly new art supplies uh, that I bought during the pandemic. For example, this arches paper is something that I've never used before, so it's entirely new to me. Actually, all my art supplies are pretty new because, um, as I talked about in my last video, I am reacquainting myself with my art hobby uh, that I've been neglecting so for, for a pretty long time now. I'll be using these Stedler pencils, which are very nice quality. And this is the character that I'm going to be attempting to paint today. So this video is a continuation from the last video where I introduced Darren, otherwise known as Taco King. So this is Darren's most beloved pet, who just happens to be a multicolored piñata. So the original drawing for this uh, was done with just simple paper and pencil, and then I worked uh, on it and revised it in, uh, on the iPad. And now I'm just tracing it uh, onto watercolor paper. So these are the brushes that I'm going to be using, which are very affordable watercolor brushes. Uh, I'm still very new to watercolor painting, and I don't have much experience yet, so I'm not willing to invest in expensive brushes just yet. From what I'm learning, uh, it seems that it's better to buy uh, good wa watercolor paper uh, instead of a high-end watercolor brush. I'm also going to be using the lids of these Medine watercolor palettes, which are just freaking adorable, if I could say. I also have this set of brush pens called Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens Brush. Uh, I personally think that the name is, is backwards on the box, but it should be, I think it should be um, brush pens, but uh, whatever, it's a German company. Uh, these are pigmented India ink based pens. They have a high uh, light fastness, which just means that the colors won't fade so quickly with the passage of time. They are also, uh, they come very nicely packaged uh, with the ability to pull the pens out into tiers but I usually keep them tucked into the box. To me, it's just easier to work that way. They're also uh, odorless, acid-free, and pH neutral, and they're considered uh, waterproof and permanent. So I decided not to use them directly on the paper. I thought it would work better to pull the color off the palette with a brush. So to me, these work a lot like water-soluble media in that once the color begins to dry, you're not going to be able to lift it like traditional watercolor. And as I'm working, I start to realize as I put the color down just how absorbent this paper is. Uh, and about this point, I start to freak out because it's looking so bad and I'm just absolutely hating it. Um, I like to think that this art vid comes across as relaxing, which is my intention, but in reality, I am absolutely stressed out and freaking out right now because the paper just drank up the color so fast. I mean, it gave me like no time to move the color around and even it out. So at this point, I, I really had this urge to like start over, but I just decided to, to carry on and see if I could save it because the paper is so expensive and it's all part of experimentation anyways. These pens feel amazing, by the way. Uh, they're truly a premium product and they feel very rewarding to work with. Uh, I also feel like they're just the right amount of vibrancy that um, I like to work with. So uh, they're not so bright that they look cheesy or fake and uh, the color is a little softer in some respects, but I think that gives the color a little bit of realness that you can't quite get from, from dye-based inks. I also really appreciate the fact that all of these colors have uh, unique names, not just numbers, because being a creative person, I can tell you numbers don't stick in my head, but I do recognize color names and I remember color names uh, and I'm, I'm usually looking for specific uh, colors by their name. For example, uh, Paz's base color is always Pink Matter Lake. The nice thing about working with the Fabricastel products is that they didn't just think about this one-off set of pens. Uh, their colors carry across different uh, product lines. So like in the last video, we worked with the Fabricastel um, watercolor pencils. And that set has a lot of the same colors as these pens. So if you wanted to use 
the pencils and the pens together, the colors are all gonna match up. So to me, it's, it's not just like one product. They put together like this cohesive system of colors that would uh, carry across different products. So if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, I don't consider myself a, a watercolor painter. Uh, this medium is something I started doing little by little during the pandemic as something to pass the time during quarantine. I watched some like watercolor videos on YouTube and thought it would be a good medium for the environment that I'm working in, which is fairly small. Uh, normally I would have picked alcohol-based markers to work with long term, uh, which is more of what I used to use back in art school a lot. Uh, but I ruled those out generally because of the smell they give off and I'm in a small environment and you need uh, proper ventilation for stuff like that. And I don't feel like burning any more brain cells than I already, you know, burned in high school, in, uh, in art school. Uh, so I just think the alcohol markers are pretty toxic and expensive. Uh, but certain watercolors can be pretty toxic as well, depending on, on what you're using. The nice thing about uh, watercolors is that you can have like three colors and mix uh, tons of different colors based off the three. Like if you had basic primary colors like red, blue, and yellow, you can pretty much cover an entire spe spectrum of color. Uh, and with um, a little bit of paint goes goes a long way in watercolors. So really the only thing that is super costly is, is the paper. Uh, I also think I respect watercolor painting a lot more uh, now that I, I understand it better, which uh, really speaks to the fact that you really shouldn't knock something you don't understand. Um, so um, I learned a life lesson there. I think in my, in my art school days, which was eons ago, watercolor was my least favorite medium. I guess um, back then I saw it as like this sleepy time medium for older folk who like to paint seaside landscapes and uh, things like fields of wheat, um, which a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, now that I've taken a dedicated, you know, basic watercolor painting class during the pandemic, uh, I'm realizing that it might even be more challenging than oil painting, of which I did take in art school. So you've got to think oil painting is actually a very forgiving medium. Think about it this way. Oil painting takes forever to dry. So you can constantly be manipulating a painting without the time constraint that you have with watercolor. Uh, watercolor requires perfect timing and patience because, because of that drying factor. So oil paint also lets you um, cover up your mistakes pretty easy because color is, is not transparent like watercolor. Um, but watercolor doesn't seem to allow for any mistakes and like every misstroke can be really apparent uh, in a watercolor painting. So uh, it's, it's very easy to muddy up your colors and mess up your painting if, if you're not patient. So hopefully with time, I, uh, I hope to have better control with watercolor painting because I would like to do more complex pieces. Anyways, I wanted to do a quick recap of the last video for those of you who just discovered this channel. Although I'm quickly realizing that because I'm creating a comic series based off previous events slash videos, that it would almost be beneficial to you guys if I did like an intro like they do uh, in TV shows where they start off with a narrator that says previously on, you know, fill in the TV show's name here. And then they go into a short recap of the previous episode or whatever. So it'd be like, previously on Taco King Art. Mm, I don't know, maybe I'll experiment with that. I just think that it would be helpful for people who are watching the videos for the first time and knowing that some people might not start from the beginning. I'm just wondering if, if you guys will be able to follow along as this channel progresses. Well, let's do a, a quick recap anyways, since this is all fairly new to everyone, including me. So if you haven't seen, the, if you didn't see the last video, I talked about how this channel is about creating art and a storyline for a comic series uh, with the hefty, 
but not impossible goal of creating a series of comic pages around a central set of characters that could eventually be combined together into a comic book. I also went over the main character, who is Darren, aka Taco King, who is the head chef and owner of Taco King Restaurant. So let's go over some of this character's personality traits and how she relates to the main character from the last episode. So like I said before, this is Paz, and Paz lives with Darren in his penthouse suite somewhere in the center of a large city. So I'm thinking that in terms of personality, Paz is a lot like having a pet dog. And when you think about dogs' personalities, they're almost uh, perpetually happy creatures. So little things uh, bring them immense joy. And they also love the presence of people and they love attention. So I think that's how Paz is generally most of the time. But you have to remember that she's still not a dog. She's, she's actually a donkey. And most classic piñatas are donkeys. And because of this, Paz can't ignore uh, other innate traits like immense stubbornness. So sometimes Paz wants what she wants and it's very difficult for Taco King to change her mind. And like any good piñata, Paz also likes to eat things like uh, candy and cupcakes and uh, chocolate, ice cream, basically anything that has sugar in it, that's what Paz eats. Um, she also eats regular food too, but uh, sweets are her favorite thing. Let me see, what else can I tell you about Paz? Um, I drew her with a long, uh, long neck, like a donkey would have. And uh, donkeys also have a mane, kind of like a horse, so I kept that attribute. But because she's also a, a piñata, her legs are kind of stiff looking, as if she was uh, made out of paper mache. So if you could imagine, she sounds a little like paper rustling when she walks. Like every step she takes, you would hear the little crinkle of, of her tissue paper layers. Uh, and her tail is like three tails in one, and they would all be made out of uh, multicolored tissue paper as well. So I'm also coming up with a backstory for Paz and how uh, Darren acquired her, but I'm not ready to share that one just yet. Uh, I am mentally working on that story in the background, but overall, I hope you got a sense of who Paz is, and I hope you guys can join me in the next video. Until then, please uh, like, uh, subscribe, and enjoy the reveal.